Good morning, everybody. Yeah, we're heading west, getting into a new state today. This road, this back road highway is uh, beautiful. One of the nicest paved roads Miranda's been on in her, oh my goodness, 4,500 miles. I've almost put on 5,000 miles on Miranda in just a month and a half. That is crazy. Oh my gosh. I got the catalytic heater, I don't know if you can see it, stored behind the passenger seat. And to keep the great thing from rattling, it's bungeed around the cover. It's working great over there. And as the speed limit drops down to 45 here, this is the last town in Kansas. Coolidge. Coolidge, Kansas. So we can officially at least uh, uh, say our goodbye to Kansas. It's been nice, a little too windy, but I'm gonna pull off the highway here real quick because look at this wooden sign here. This might be the neatest welcome sign. Welcome to colorful Colorado. That is pretty stinking cool. All right, we'll get back on this highway. Um, Rest area half mile with a dump station, apparently. With an RV dump station. Yeah, sure. Okay, so the Welcome to Colorado Center is on the wrong side of the highway as you get into Colorado. It's on the Leaving Colorado side. But maybe they couldn't buy the land over there, so they bought the land over here. That makes sense. It's a very small little rest area here, but here we go. RV dump and clean out. Perfect, and it's not locked or closed. Sweet. One of the things I like about the system here on the Murata is this open face. I'll show you what it looks like here. I gotta do part of this with gloves and part of it without, but uh, I can access all of the water fill up and everything. I do have a sewer tank flusher, so they have water here available so I can actually flush the black tank. But this system right here, this, this is a little new. So it's like, it's on a swinging boom and it's always inside of it. So there's nothing to wrap up or put away. You just cap it each time. And then I take it over here like this. I'll do black first, gray second. While that's emptying, you gotta hold this down to make it work. <laughs> Kinda weird. We're flushing my black tank, getting all that yuck out of there. It also sanitizes the sewer hose on the way out because once your tanks are empty, you're, you're flushing regular water right down. So yeah, it's an easy operation. I like it. I topped off my water at the park before I left, so I'm good on drinking water. Everything is good. I need propane. I'll get propane soon. They do provide two pull-through RV spaces here at the rest area. So Jackson and I are having lunch here in Holly, Colorado. And yes, I'm running the air conditioner inside while the oven's preheating. Good old Colorado. Trying to think. So there's no signs that say you can't overnight park here at this rest area. I, I generally like to stay away from them because they can get noisy when the trucks pull in and idle or run their generators and stuff. So I don't know. This is that water spigot that was over there. I don't know if this is drinking water or not, but the kind you push down to activate. I've not seen that on the road, but it makes sense. So now we got the Colorado flag up there. Not waving very much because it's not very windy. Yes. Yep, can you hear my AC unit up there? <laughs> That's right. Oh yeah, it's cool in here. I mean, running it for an hour while I'm at the rest area off of solar and my lithium batteries, it doesn't even drop below 100% in an hour. So nothing is unlimited, like I said, but it is nice. I'm getting ready to put my Tony's pizza in the oven there. Pizza is in the oven and a semi truck has pulled into the RV space and barely left me enough room to even get out of here when I want to leave. I mean, he is right up on me. RV parking only. Apparently he doesn't care, and that's why I hate rest stops, rest areas. I'm watching Batman, the 1966 series on DVD. I have the complete series, because I got no TV stations, no Wi-Fi, no nothing around here. So we're gonna watch some 
got Penguin in this episode. I like this series. I think it's pizza time. Oh yeah. Get him, Batman. Get him, Batman. What if I told you we're done driving for the whole day, the whole day? I know I'm excited too. Let's be honest, not the prettiest place, but within 15 miles of getting into Colorado, I found free boondocking. You know, I, I know that because pulling in here, overnight camping. See where that arrow's pointing? Right where <laughs> I'm parked. Uh, Colorado Division of Wildlife. Pick up all empty halls and trash or you'll be ticketed. Colorado Parks and Wildlife. Thanks, Colorado, you rock. All it is is a gravel turnaround. But I mean, it is what it is. It's still approved free camping and there is some water over here. I was going to park next to the water and then I started driving in here and you can see all of the colorful shotgun shells everywhere. I mean, I know it's probably not going to hurt anything to run over them, but uh, there is some metal in there. You know, I don't, I don't, well, there's just casings everywhere. That is why this area will probably be closed the next time you guys visit the area here because of abuse like that. And that's too bad. Plus, I don't know, there might be some people coming down here to party later tonight and fire off some guns and drink down here. So I will stay right there, kind of out of the way. But the Arkansas River. <laughs> is it the same Arkansas River that would... I have no idea. I'm not even... It probably is. Yeah, it probably is. I think it ties into the... Actually, I think it ties into the Colorado first. That's probably what happens. It's kind of nasty right there. But no, that looks pretty. Hey, could be worse. Could be a Walmart parking lot. I am boondocking in a class A. Boondocking in a class A, which is impossible, yo. <laughs> I'm never gonna let that go, guys. Because <laughs> uh, it's impossible to boondock in a class A now, Eric. Okay. Okay. Uh, settling in here, can you see my antenna? on the other side of that bluff, right over there. I'm back here over at the river, because I noticed some shiny, weird car parts in the ditch. I mean, we're on the other side of the bluff where nobody can really see this, but there are some really old pieces of iron in here. Marcy Harris. Look at that old truck with the bullet holes in it. And that, these, those are some old vehicles, really old vehicles. I'm not sure if they drove off the highway and just landed here and nobody knew because nobody lives over here so you can't see what's going on there. That is a little bit creepy though. Strange place to find abandoned wrecked cars. Well, we'll head back to the RV. Now that I'm in Colorado, I gotta make a stop over at the pot store. I cracked my pot and I need a new one. Uh, by the way, there is a Walmart about nine miles away in Lamar, and that is my backup in case something happens out here, and in case it gets too rowdy or loud or it just doesn't work. I do have a backup. It's a Walmart parking lot, but it, it is available to me, to me just in case. For right now, I think we're going to be okay, though. So as you probably saw from that four hour time lapse, not a single car even turned down here into this area to check it out. Nobody partying, nobody doing any legal activity or disturbing the peace or anything. So I really liked out with this little spot here. And we're gonna get back on the road tomorrow. 
Well, I'm still gonna include it in this video, so let me sleep, and then I will take you guys into Lamar, which is about nine miles away from here in this same video here in a minute. Well, good morning. Uh, staying here worked out just fine last night. Nobody drove down here, no interruptions. Nobody being bad, just uh, quiet and peaceful out here. I had a perfect end to this video, I thought, and that was the night lapse, which this cord is defective, and it only took uh, like 11 pictures last night of the stars did not work for me. So things don't always go as planned, but hey, let's get on the road, go into town, and uh, see what we can find today. You know, I gotta point out my appreciation when I see it, and Lamar does some things right with huge, big slots for RVs to park in and experience their, their city. They got an old train, and uh, I think it's a water tower up there, or maybe a green tower, it could be. Uh, let's see, AT and SF. Uh, Santa Fe. No, I'm not sure what AT stands for. What does that stand for? Uh, I am noticing a lot of Bondo work. <laughs> like, <laughs> okay, well, still, appreciate the effort trying to preserve it. Okay, then on the other side, behind the train, anybody know what that is? You know those big wind generators you see in some places with the three of these on them? That's how big they really are. And oftentimes when you're in the Midwest, you will see these on the back of semi-trucks flailing over and the, it's really flexible, like it's bouncing and flexible. But yeah, that's, that's pretty massive. And then this, the Enchanted Forest of Lamar, Colorado. Let's go check it out. I walked all the way through here and I still don't really know what it is. I'm gonna guess seasonally it does something because it's not doing anything right now. Hmm, a dog park. It, I was just told it is a dog park. Okay. Okay, this is a weird one. And you guys know I like weird and quirky. This is petrified wood, right? So it is almost all turned to rock. Although, there have been some repairs, because that's concrete and brick there. But this is definitely 100% petrified wood. And what we have here apparently is an old gas station that was built out of petrified wood and is now stone. In fact, wait, believe it or not, petrified wood building built of wood turned to stone 175 billion years old. I don't actually believe that, Ripley, but different. I'm kind of surprised it lasted this long. Obviously, they've done some repairs and upkeep to keep it standing here on the corner, which has, well, like I said, it's no longer a gas station. Looks like it's a used sales car lot. But that's a weird one, right? Yeah. I walked nearly a mile and a half just walking around the city of Lamar, Colorado, for no reason. Except I wanted to get a soda and then realized I didn't bring my wallet or my phone or anything. Oh, well. I have decided to stay here in the city of Lamar, Colorado today. I love the friendliness of other RVers like the gentleman in the fifth wheel here. We are both parked here at the Walmart of Lamar. He came over to tell me that across the street at something something R is propane for $1.79 a gallon. I thought he was joking. I called over there. They confirmed it. I said, last price I paid was $3.99 a gallon in Texas. So uh, I did fill up, but still I have a 20 pound propane tank, so it still cost me $20. But what a smoking hot deal. And I really appreciate the heads up. But with that in mind, yeah, I'm going to stay here. And since this Walmart allows it and Jackson, I will be back with you from the road, moving on closer to Denver in our next video. So have a good night, guys. Bye-bye.